Well, welcome back, and um, glad to, that you could join us again. In our previous slideshow, we, show, we, we showed that um, not only your endogenous hormones or your internal hormones, that you, the ones that you make, the natural hormones that you make, affect you, but also you can be affected by environmental estrogens. Um, and these environmental estrogens could be synthetic chemicals such as pesticides, herbicides, laundry detergents, or they may also be something that you could find um, that is natural. Um, we showed that even organic lavender and clover um, can affect your hormones. So the question is, um, so now we're going to talk about um, how careful you have to be and why some people are more sensitive than other people. So how careful do you have to be when you avoid these xenoestrogens? Well, um, very simply, if you have a mild PMS, uh, suppose you just have some bloating and breast tenderness and some, uh, a little bit of chalk or craving, um, and you don't have to be that careful. However, if you have some kind of major um, PMS or severe endometriosis, suppose you're having outbursts and uh, you're uh, extremely angry at your office workers, uh, then you're going to have to be a lot more careful. Uh, typically, severe endometriosis patients, I have about, as of um, 2010, I have about uh, 5,000 endometriosis patients, some of whom are quite severe. Incidentally, I have, uh, I feel, um, an above 90% um, success in helping people fight severe endometriosis. Typically, these endometriosis patients um, have uh, fear, stress, and anxiety. And whenever you have fear, stress, and anxiety, it um, will decrease your ability to excrete all chemicals, including xenoestrogens. And we'll go over that a little bit more as well in the, um, in the, in the next slide. So um, the important thing to remember here is that anything put on the skin is 10 times the oral dose in potency. And that's extremely surprising. So uh, you can think of the estradiol patch. Uh, the patch you put on your skin, uh, people get estradiol uh, directly from that patch and into the body. Or the nicoderm patch, people get nicotine uh, directly in the body. So anything you put on the skin, this includes laundry, soap, shampoo, uh, deodorant, lotions, uh, these things go directly into the body. And the reason why uh, there are 10 times the oral dose in potency is that it bypasses the liver. And so if you put something directly on top of your skin, it goes directly in your body. But if you ate something, it would be first past 90% inactivated by the liver. So for instance, if you had a 20 milligram topical dose of progesterone, this would be equivalent to a 200 milligram oral dose. So what happens, you take the oral dose and 90% um, of the progesterone, 180 milligrams, gets first pass inactivated by the liver. Okay. And so um, let's talk about uh, fear, stress, and anxiety now um, for most of my patients. Let's talk about the hallmark of symptoms of fear, stress, and anxiety. And so um, the first thing that, um, that uh, severe uh, patients usually have is a hypersensitive to smell uh, or perfume. They usually may have a headache with perfume or they may smell newsprint and uh, have a headache. And so it's not unusual for these people to avoid, in extreme cases, to avoid the um, uh, detergent aisle in the grocery store. Or I've some, had some people wear gloves to read the newspaper. And so um, these people are um, sensitive or hypersensitive to smell. It's also possible to have a complete um, anosia or no smell at all. And again, you can read more about this in, in, in an alternative approach to allergies by Theron Randolph. And Theron Randolph was a medical doctor, MD, who um, used to chair, uh, we used to be the head of University of Chicago um, allergy um, to teach in the medical school at University of Chicago. Okay, uh, the next thing that you could do, is, um, usually people who have an, um, fear, stress, and anxiety, um, they have an impaired Romberg. So a Romberg test, um, that was a physician's name, uh, what you do is you put your feet together, stand on your tiptoes, and close your eyes. And people who um, have this chemical sensitivity or hypersensitive smell, it's fear, stress, and anxiety, they will um, wobble. So what you do is you get your uh, a healthy young teenager, have him do this test, 
put the feet together, stand on tiptoes, close their eyes, see how much they wobble, and then the person who um, you think may have this hypersensitive, hypersensitive to smell, he would do the same thing, and they usually wobble more. As you get better and um, detox yourself and get rid of the fear, stress, and anxiety, the Romberg test will get better. The third question I usually use to test if this person has uh, fear, stress, or anxiety is if you drink a cup of coffee just before you sleep, it usually keeps you up all night. Uh, this means you have difficulty excreting caffeine. And what you're saying is, well, your body has difficulty excreting caffeine, which means your body um, has difficulty excreting all chemicals, including xenoestrogens. Uh, including everything that you put on the skin. So these three questions are usually um, what I use to um, screen patients to see if they're chemically sensitive and also they have this fear, stress, and anxiety. And so what happens is that typically uh, a severe endometriosis patient will have all these things um, in addition to having allergies as well. So whenever you have fear, stress, and anxiety, you'll also have allergies. But these three questions um, will pretty much tell me uh, that this person has difficulty excreting all chemicals. And so um, let's talk about severe disease. Um, so in severe disease, like a severe endometriosis, um, view your health like a stream. And um, at the top of the stream would be fear, stress, and anxiety. And what happens is that this fear, stress, and anxiety um, creates high histamine levels uh, with high allergies high interleukin-6 levels, uh, high catecholamines such as uh, adrenaline, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and then a de de decreased excretion of all chemicals including uh, xenoestrogens. And I call this a clogged toilet syndrome. So um, what happens is if you have a severe case of endometriosis or, or severe case of um, these um, estrogen dominant diseases, um, at the top of the stream, the real root cause of the disease is fear, stress, and anxiety. And this leads to this cascade of chemicals um, that your body produces high histamine, which makes it easier for allergies to trigger the high interleukin-6, the high catecholamines, and then re resulting in a decreased excretion of all chemicals, including xenoestrogens. And so, at, uh, here, and, and so the xenoestrogens come in to, to your body, and you just simply can't get rid of them. So I, here I am at the bottom of the stream, and I'm saying, hey, take natural progesterone to sort of balance out the xenoestrogens and avoid xenoestrogens so that you don't have them in your body. But if you were able to get rid of the fear, stress, and anxiety, um, what would happen is all the high histamine, high interleukin-6, high catecholamines, and decreased excretion of chemicals would all go away. And it, you're actually your excretion of all chemicals would actually increase. And what happened is you would become less sensitive to xenoestrogens. So in severe disease, what happens is usually the root cause of the disease is fear, stress, anxiety at the top of the, of the stream. And at the bottom of the stream, I'm, I'm trying to adjust the biochemical, the biochemistry by taking natural progesterone, avoiding xenoestrogens. But if you got rid of your fear, stress, and anxiety, you'd become less sensitive to xenoestrogens and less allergic um, in general. So what we're saying is that um, the way you think affects your brain chemistry, and the brain chemistry affects your body chemistry, and your body chemistry affects your disease, okay, including allergies and decreased excretion of all chemicals. So Fear, stress, and anxiety makes allergies worse. And let's take a look at um, one experiment that was done um, at Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio, by Kikot and Glazer, uh, PhD. And um, this was done, I think, about, uh, a year, I want to say a year and a half ago. I'm not quite certain, but you guys can Google it. They took 28 men and women with a history of hay fever and seasonal allergies. And uh, so these people were prone uh, to become allergic. Okay. And the first day they made them read a magazine. And then they did the, the, the skin prick test. So you take an allergen and you prick the skin with a little needle, the typical skin allergy test. And then um, the second day they made them videotape a speech and said, we're gonna, you're going to have to make a speech and we're going to videotape you and grade you. And then, or made them do math problems without a paper. And then they did a second prick test, prick test, skin prick test, on the same people. 
the wheels, um, which are the, the red spots around the, uh, you, you, you pin prick with the needle and you have an allergen and then you measure the redness and also raised spot on the skin. And the second pinprick test showed that the wheels are 75% larger after they were psychologically stressed. Um, the next day they came back and they were pinpricked again and the wheels were still larger. So the increased catecholamines, histamines, and interleukin-6, um, it kind of goes, um, you know, for a couple days. Um, and um, that's what's really nasty about, about stress and these allergies. So um, after, you sh after you stress someone, okay, the wheels are 75% larger after stress, and this shows that whenever you have fear, stress, and anxiety, your reaction to allergens is greater. And that's why um, the root cause of the severe disease, like an endometriosis, usually the root cause is fear, stress, and anxiety. And these uh, women with endometriosis, severe endometriosis, tend to have um, uh, a, a, uh, a fear, stress, anxiety issue. And if you ask them, they may have had some kind of um, psychologically significant event in their life, or they may have come from a family that just um, practices fear, stress, and, and anxiety. Okay, so how sensitive can you be? And um, this was kind of amazing to me, okay? And it turns out that these hormones are active at parts per billion. And so parts per billion means that um, the same parts per billion means that you can spit an Olympic-sized pool, and the spit concentration is parts per billion. So these hormones are active at parts per billion. So imagine spitting in this Olympic-sized swimming pool. This is a Olympic-sized swimming pool in China. And the concentration of the spit in the pool is parts per billion. So um, this is kind of amazing to me. Um, uh, I had some patients who, were, who had followed our protocol. They were living a fairly clean life. And um, one lady calls me up. She said, I put this mascara on. I can feel myself bloat. I'm going, no, you know, that's crazy. You know, it's just a little mascara. How could that possibly make any difference? Okay, so I hung up. I go, crazy lady. This lady's nuts. I don't know. And then a couple of days later, I had a nut, the different lady call me up. She said, you know, I put this mascara on my, my, my eyes, and uh, I felt myself bloat. And I said, oh, really? Is that right? You've got to be kidding me. Okay, so I'm going, well, you know, I don't know. You know, who knows? Two or three months later, a, a different lady tell, calls me up and said, you know, I put this mascara on, and I can feel myself bloat. And so here I am, you know, I, I don't want to take away your fun by, by using mascara, um, you can get safe mascaras, uh, but it's amazing to me that people can be so sensitive to um, to just a small amount of mascara on their eyes, and I, it was it was kind of unbelievable to me. Well, um, here's another here's another example of being extremely sensitive. Um, one patient complained about uh, a, uh, a shampoo giving her sore breasts. So this one patient, she hadn't even used our product yet. Okay, and uh, she got rid of all her stuff, tried to follow our protocol, and she said um, for about a month, and she said seven days ago my breast started hurting. I said, well, what did you do seven days ago? And she said, well, I went to the, um, the health food store, I got this extremely expensive organic shampoo, and um, I started using it, and my breast started hurting seven days ago when I started using this shampoo. So I said, well, why don't you read me the ingredients? And she started reading off the ingredients, and uh, one of the ingredients happened to be pomegranate. And pomegranates used in the ancient world uh, to create miscarriages. And if it's used to create miscarriages, therefore it must be a progesterone blocker. Okay, so um, she stopped the shampoo, and her breast soreness went away. And you think, well, how could that possibly make any difference? You know, the shampoo you put it on your head for about 15 minutes. Okay, you you wash it off. And uh, you're done, okay? And how could that shampoo possibly um, give her sore breasts? But that's what she was telling me, okay? So she stopped the shampoo and the sore breasts went away. Okay, so again, um, a lot of these xenoestrogens hormones are active at parts per billion. And if you happen to have um, fear, stress, and anxiety, okay, or multiple allergies, hypersensitive to smell, impaired Romberg, drink coffee, it keeps you up all night, uh, then your sensitivity goes way up because you're having difficult excrete, um, excreting xenoestrogens. Uh, and so um, the next uh, slide that we have is, um, I guess, a, a plug for our product, and that's how I make my living. 
And so um, why is Progestel, our product, different from many of our competitors? And so uh, when you come back um, to see our next slide, we'll talk about that. So again, thank you for joining us. This is Dr. Eckhart with Women's Therapeutic Institute. Uh, thank you again for coming.